Ignore the fact that it's uh, dark outside. Because technically I was supposed to record this during the day, like the intro section, but it was just raining a ton, so I didn't wanna. It's still raining, so... <laughs> Nothing has really gotten any better. The point is, I feel like YouTubers have a scaling problem. Like a lot of YouTubers fall into the problem of making bigger videos, like constantly upping themselves. So if your numbers are low, just increase your budget and you're good. And I feel like Onigiri might have fallen into that hole because the footage she sends me is like one terabyte. Oh, they're going drifting and you need like five GoPros for it and like cinema quality cameras. Or you're doing the Spartan race and you need like an actual cameraman. And it's... It's all so much, but I'm only saying this because I have fallen into the same hole and I completely understand the mindset behind it as well. Like I spent six months, half a year doing the boxing video. It cost a ton of money, ton of time, and it underperformed immensely. But now that I've taken some time, I understand why. And I feel like with her, it's kind of hard because she's a huge streamer already. She has the audience. So when you, she's starting the YouTube channel, she's kind of hitting the ground running. Like YouTubers start from scratch. They don't know what to do. They learn along the way. It takes years to do stuff, to make stuff actually good. But in her case, she's like literally started and it all had to be good from the get go. So because she didn't know how to do stuff, she just threw money at it. And my plan is to show today that you don't need money, hopefully. As my plan is to become a director or a producer in a way. Make a YouTube video for her to see if it can do well without just a ton of equipment or a ton of money thrown into it. So today, I'm in the producer role. I'm gonna show you like the behind the scenes, what it takes to make a video and stuff like that. I spent a ton of time researching different places, different ideas. In total, I gave her eight ideas on what to do. The final idea that we ended up going with is reviewing the top five worst restaurants. But of course we don't want to be mean, so in the Ryan Trahan style, we're just trying to do... Um, we're just trying to find the positives in those places. And the first place we're starting out with, which is also rated the best, is Alice in Fantasy Book. Can I say just a whipped cream? There's no audio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I keep up forgetting. The microphone is there. <laughs> in her case, it's kind of good if you have a smaller team. Because if you have a big team with bigger cameras, you need to talk to people in advance. You need to reserve stuff. And in this case, it's kind of good that we didn't need to reserve places for like hours in advance or like talk to people, spend so much time going into places. Instead, we could just show up, look like tourists and film stuff. Because, like, she's not a big YouTuber, she's not Mr. Beast, that it, like, re reaches a huge audience. It doesn't have to be, like, by the books, kind of. Because this is not a TV show, this is just, technically, just, you know, a vlog. But also, with videos like these, you have to kind of plan in advance. Or you can't plan in advance, you have to think on the go. Like, for example, the first place we went to, turns out, it, they went on a siesta. So we couldn't really go there initially. So instead, we went to the closest place, which was... Uh, the fourth place, then we went to the fifth place, then we went back to the second place or third place, and then we went to the first place as the last place. And we even skipped on the final place because we had five things in mind, but we only did four. And stuff like this is what you kind of have to think about. You can't be like very strict about your plans. So I have written down everything and I know that if something messes up, I can just switch to another thing or like move things around and then in post put things together so they'd line up properly. It's just very hard to think about it on the go as if you don't think about continuity you'll just end up with a weird pacing another thing to note if you're in tokyo on a rainy day uh taxis non-existent because i guess everybody's using taxis already same goes for uh, places inside like if it's raining people are going to use taxis to go to places inside who could have guessed but that also added a ton of time onto the shoot because i wanted it to be done like two hours earlier but just purely because we had to walk everywhere you know it was much more difficult to film as well. Stuff ended up like this. So essentially, what is gonna be our 20 minute video, or like 20-ish minutes, uh, took me three hours to research, six hours to film, and it's gonna take another, I don't know, six to 10 hours to edit, plus thumbnail. I know people already know that YouTube videos take longer to make than I think, because I feel like initially, years ago, people would think, oh, it's a 10 minute video, it's not gonna take like half a day, but, but in reality, it would take like half a week. So I don't think this is a real surprise to like a lot of you that videos take time, especially something like this that has like multiple moving parts. But in terms of budget, I guess, you might think like, oh, this is a fairly simple video, you know, I already have the camera, I just point and shoot, it's very easy. But considering the transportation, the things we bought, 
Uh, I'm gonna have a thumbnail artist actually help me with it. Though I'm not gonna spend any money on editing, potentially, because I'm gonna do it myself, because I have ideas in my mind already, what I wanna do with the footage. Maybe, I'm not sure. But like an easy project like this, just costs $200. Plus, if you wanna, you know, have it actually edited for a professional, aka me or somebody in my team, you can add like at least double, triple onto that price. So things add up quite fast. So the video isn't going to look the most professional, but it really doesn't have to be. You don't need steady cams, gimbals, lights, all of the shebang. It's only the idea, the message that matters. Aside from audio, audio is number one, then the message. Like you just need good audio no matter what. But this was a kind of a challenge, you know, just to see if it works, if I can make something work. So if you want to know if it actually did well, let me know in the comments and I'll cover it in the monthly recap. Because essentially this video needs to hit like the performance of at least the top five videos on the channel to perform well. If it like if it's like worse than that, then it's it's not really worth it, considering the normal streams that she does. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, bye bye.